And this is the star of today's show, Kraft Mac and Cheese. We all know what this tastes like. Now here's the deal. I have done so many experiments with steaks. I mean, we're talking about putting pepto on a steak, dry aging it in peanut butter, and a classic one using baking soda to find out how it tastes. Now here's the most important thing. I always learn something new. And today's experiment is no different. As some of you asked me to give this a go and you said that it tastes good. Well, we're gonna find out right now. Because I'm gonna be using this yellow magical powder that comes inside of the Kraft Mac and Cheese. Now this has a lot of ingredients inside. If you take a look at the label, it tells you everything it has. There's only one thing missing, real cheese. But that does not mean that this does not taste good. There is a reason why millions of people buy this every year. And since it's a familiar taste, let's see how it's gonna pair up with these beautiful steaks. Take a look. They are choice grade, they have a beautiful marbling on them, and most importantly, they are one and a half inches thick. And as you know, I have three steaks. So obviously one has to be the control, but the other two is gonna be our experimental steak. The very first one is pretty simple. I went ahead and added a good amount of that Kraft mac and cheese powder. Now when I say a good amount, I mean the whole bag. I rubbed it real good to ensure that every single edge of the steak was perfectly coated. Now that is what I'm talking about. I did not add any seasoning though. Let's just see what happens if you only use the mac and cheese powder. Because now the only thing left was to add it to the bag, vacuum sealed it, and it was now ready to be cooked. The other two steaks, I'm gonna be treating it a little bit different. I'm gonna fully season both of them. I did that with a good amount of salt, followed by freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. Notice that I seasoned it real good. Then I went ahead and threw them both in the bag, vacuum sealed them, and they are now ready for sous vide. That is perfect because it allows me time to go ahead and make this. We're talking about a compound butter, one that is made completely with only mac and cheese and nothing else. And here's how I did it. First, I got room temperature butter and threw it in my food processor. Then I added one whole bag of mac and cheese powdered right inside. Blend every everything on high, then I got some clinch plastic and placed the whole butter mixture right on top. Started to close it up real gently and rolled everything into itself, as the only thing left now was to let it solidify in my refrigerator. That was perfect because it allows me time to go ahead and make an incredible side dish. And since we're on the theme of mac and cheese, why not use mac and cheese, but trying to make it better. I don't know about you, but I love mac and cheese, and I'm gonna show you how I make mine which is much better than just the box stuff. I started first by melting a good amount of butter, then I threw in some all-purpose flour and cook that flour real good. This is a crucial step, especially if you want your mac and cheese to taste real good. How do I know when it's ready? If it smells like pie dough, you know it's done. Then I immediately throw in cold milk. Mix everything well under high heat. As the milk is heating up, everything is gonna start thickening up on you real quick. Once that's done, add half of the mac and cheese pack, because the next thing to add is real cheese. For today, I chose Kobe and Monterey Jack and cheddar cheese. Now notice that I'm using the real block. None of the pre-graded stuff. This is better. Now we want everything to melt nice and fast, so throwing it in the food processor is definitely the way to go. It just speeds up the process tremendously. As you can see, in the end, this is what I was left with. So I went ahead and added the whole thing to my cheese sauce and mixed it so everything can melt nice and slowly. Now this is already way better than that regular powder stuff. For my pasta, it's pretty simple. I cooked it exactly with the instructions of the packaging. Now the next thing was to combine both of them together and mix it real good. So after mixing everything well, I went ahead and placed it on a casserole dish, followed by a good amount of more cheese. Now into the broiler you went so that the cheese can fully melt, because this is my side dish. And it's gonna be perfect to go along with those steaks. Because the only thing left to do is to cook them at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for two and a half hours. We got our beautiful steaks cooking. Let me know in the comments right now which one you think is gonna be better. I think I have my favorite and I think this experiment is gonna work out really well. And the only reason we're doing this experiment is because you guys wrote it down for me to try. Without you, that would never be sous vide everything. So make sure that you write down anything you'd like us to try, we'll definitely do it. With all that being said, the steaks are ready, we are hungry, and it's time to take it out. Let's do it. Those things does not look that good. I agree with you on this one 100%. Especially the one with the cheese. I mean, take a look at this. Oh man, it does not look appetizing. But like always, we never judge a book by its cover because it's all about the taste. Here's the plan. I'm gonna be using the flamethrower to put a nice crust in all of them. But remember, we got the one that was cooked with the cheese powder. The other one, I'm gonna be putting the compound butter and make sure that that butter melts right on top. But with all that being said, I know what you're thinking. I know it doesn't look that good right now, but watch this.
All right, everybody, here we got our beautiful steaks, a little side dish. You guys hungry? That's not a little side dish, Google. That's a big <laughs> side dish right there. That, We're yeah. definitely going to feed everyone. This one's a little fat today. It's a little tall, you know what I mean? This is just regular, you know, box craft mac and cheese. I didn't do anything special or anything like that. Oh, okay. Okay. So as you can tell, we have three steaks and we have three steaks. We definitely have an experiment going on. I want to know which one you taste better and why does it taste better and all that good stuff. You guys, let us know the truth. Sounds like a plan? Let's do it. We will go this direction here. Go for it, Leo. You pick your first. Go ahead, Andrew. Let's go for it. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Huh. Come on now. Oh. Leo, they ask me all the time, do you get tired of steaks? No, but especially sous vide steaks. It's just like, <laughs> it's just like no matter what, it, you just can't get used to it. It's just so amazing every time you take a bite. It's the texture. Why is it so, so tender? Soft. It's it, so soft. I don't ask questions. <laughs> I just I just eat the steaks and I'm just happy after yeah. I eat them. You put that thing in a, in a vacuum seal bag mm -hmm. and then you put it in this hot water and then boom. It comes out perfect. Okay. Stop, bro! We gotta go for the next one! I don't blame him, Google. I'll go, I'll go, <laughs> we we eat grilled steaks all the time, and let me tell you, there is a good. big difference when you go from a grilled steak to a sous vide steak. Yeah. I think I prefer the sous vide steak. If it wasn't for the fact that I like the flavor of charcoal, I would agree with you. <laughs> Otherwise... Wow, I'm impressed with you, your you, answer, Liam. You, you just can't beat that tenderness. There's nothing you can do unless you like, you know, put pineapple and Coca-Cola to try and get that grilled steak as tender as this steak. There's I will say I would agree with you because it's very difficult to get this type of texture. Mm -hmm. I think we have to crown you as a sous vide king from now on, Leo. Yeah, I'll give it to him. <laughs> I'll say this. I feel like it's more like a preference. Like, what do you feel like today? That's exactly me. It's, what I yeah. feel like eating today. All right. Without that being said, enough talking. Let's go for the second one because I want to try it. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 what? No, no, you got to put that steak down. I'm kind of wondering when we're going to go for that mac and cheese. The Kraft mac and cheese? The Kraft mac and cheese. <laughs> Let me get you some, Andrew. Come over here. Ooh. You know, I never made Kraft mac and cheese and it looked like that with a crust and everything. You really? Know that, right? uh, it's just regular Kraft mac and cheese, everybody. I'm yeah. sure. I'm what sure was that? Nothing. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. I'm sure a lot of the audience can relate to me. Google, I'm not as uh, I'm not as good of a cook as you are, but the one thing I do make at home all the time. This Kraft, Kraft mac and cheese. cheese. Yeah. Kraft mac and cheese. Baby. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that, baby. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong cheese. with Kraft and ramen. Yeah. <laughs> and ramen. <laughs> Plain old Kraft mac and cheese. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Plain no mac and cheese. Uh, no, uh, uh, I eat Kraft mac and cheese all the time. <laughs> this is not just Kraft mac and cheese. This is this is like if you had Kraft mac and cheese, but then you were like, ah, let me get fancy today. <laughs> you can't get that deep creaminess that this has from, from, just the box. from a normal Kraft mac exactly. and cheese box. This is very delicious, super creamy, super cheesy, and that crust on top. It has a little bit more stuff than just the pouch, everybody. A little bit. So, <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and be the, the one to do it. Uh, what is in here, Google? Gotta watch the video. Okay, <laughs> let's move on to the next one because I really wanna try. You guys ready? Such a good yeah, answer. Yeah, I mean, all right, yeah. let's go. I wish I would know a little more, but. Let's go for it. Okay, cheers, everybody. Cheers. Ooh, that's interesting. Oh, wow. It's almost like the aftertaste I have in my mouth is, is cheese. <laughs> As soon as you take a bite, the first thing that I notice is it's extra savory mm. and it's extra salty. And that cheesy aftertaste comes after and it's just weird. Is imagine it? imagine taking a bite of a steak and tasting cheese. Whatever this is, it can work. Yeah, I don't hate it, everybody. I thought I was going to hate it. I don't hate it. So I'll tell you guys immediately. This was 100% cooked with the seasoning from the mac and cheese. The yellow powder? Yeah, the yellow powder. If you put salt, pepper, garlic powder, and then you mix it together with the Kraft mac and cheese, that's gonna be money. But I'm curious about this one. You guys ready? I think, I feel like uh, now I actually do have a good idea what's going on. Oh, you have an idea? <laughs> All right, let's go for it. Make sure you got a little bit of that goodness on the top over there, okay? You don't need to tell me twice. It's all about that goodness right there. Can't wait anymore. All right, cheers, everybody. Cheers. cheers. Oh, that's the oh. oh, that's amazing. I love that that steak right there. <laughs> that is wow. Out of these three, that's the winner. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Even from yeah. the control. Exactly what you were just wow. saying about the previous steak that you need to add more seasonings and stuff like that. That's exactly what this last steak that we just had had. It has such a perfect balance of that mac and cheese and steak flavor that it just enhances both of them and makes it absolutely perfect. The one that's cooked with it and no salt, no pepper, it's more like underwhelming. This one's a lot bolder. What it's happened crazy. with this one here, at least for me, is it gives an extra creaminess on your mouth. Yeah. As soon as you swallow it, that creaminess just stay full of mac 
mac and cheese flavor. This one is amazing. Highly recommend you giving this one. If you're gonna do an experiment with several steak, the second one was good, but I made a mistake of not adding this own seasoning. You gotta add its own seasoning, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and use the mac and cheese as a rub. Anyway, guys, these are the results. This was your suggestion. Let me know in the comments down below what you would like me to try next, because this was money. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye.